Welcome to part two of the series, Fastest HDRI for VFX equals Rico Theta Z1. In this video, we'll shoot some footage and capture an HDRI so that we can add a CG car later. I'll also give you a few tips about VFX supervising as well. Hey guys, this is Alex Pierce from LightCellVR.com. We make tutorials about VFX, CG, and virtual production. If you wanna see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe. Okay, so now let's talk about setting up our scene and some things to look out for. But before we begin, you can say hi, Quinn. So if you hear some Legos in the background, you'll understand why. You'll see I have a few things set up over here. Uh, of course, I have the Rico Theta, and then you'll see I have this Chrome Ball, which is great for reflections. I have this Mannequin Head, and I have this uh, Gray Ball, as well as a color chart. Definitely on any major motion picture, they're using all this sort of stuff on every single shot, but you don't have to use it. This is all just, it helps you get closer. So. If all this stuff sort of overwhelms you, just don't even worry about it. Don't worry about spending the money and figuring it out. As you progress in your CG journey, uh, it's definitely something to look into. I can make some videos uh, more about those later. But, uh, but the other thing I do think is very important that you should think about when you're creating your CG is the scale. And you should have some sort of measurements so you know what CG object you're putting in, what the scale should be like, what, what it should look like. You also need to have enough detail in your scene so that match moving software like Synthize can track it. Now, and this, this is like the perfect scenario for something like Synthize, but I've gone ahead and put in some tracking markers here, just so you can see this is what you would do if there was no detail here, you would put in, you've probably seen this on behind the scenes stuff, people put tracking markers in, and this can be something fancy, but usually it's literally just green tape, and I've put some X's. X's are great, especially if your footage is gonna be out of focus, because you can see those a, a lot better than you can just a little point. So um, the other thing you can see here is these corners. Those corners I've measured out to be roughly the size of a Mini Cooper. I don't know that I'm gonna put a Mini Cooper in here, um, but as far as the studio size goes, I feel like that's probably gonna be a good choice. But even if I don't decide to use a Mini Cooper, I know that the measurements are 68 inches wide and I think 158 long. I have it written down here in my notes. I also have the height. So I know I set this height to be 60 inches. So this is actually the height of a, a Mini Cooper, but this is not gonna be in our final shot. So I measured the distance from the bottom of that point to the floor, as well as the top of this thermostat to the floor. So I know exactly the height from there to there, and that's gonna help me when I'm setting the scale of my scene. People use HDRIs for different reasons in CG. Sometimes they only use them for reference. They only just look at it and they go, okay, got it. And then they'll go from there, all CG lighting, all CG reflections. Um, sometimes people use a hybrid. Sometimes they'll use the HDRIs to light the scene and they'll use them for reflections or one or the other. In this particular scene, the lighting is pretty simple. And the most important thing for me is the reflections. So where you put your Rico Theta Z1 is gonna make a big difference. If you just put it anywhere, like let's say you put it at the front of the car, the reflections aren't really gonna work for the back of the car. Then you wanna put the camera right in the middle of where the car is gonna be and at camera height. So if the camera is low, put the camera low. If the camera is up high, put the theta up high as well. You would do this per shot. So if you have 10 shots of the same car, you would set up a new HDRI for each one of those. Anytime the lighting changes, it's a new HDRI. Anytime the lens or the camera changes, new HDRI. But again, if this is a little overwhelming, don't worry about it. Just when in doubt, take an HDRI. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and set this up to be the height of the camera, which I think is gonna be about here and right in the center of where the car is gonna be. Okay, so now we have set up the Rico Theta, basically where I think it's gonna be. I'll straighten it out here in a minute. I've set the light up how I think it should be set. And now I'm gonna start thinking about the camera movement. So I think what I wanna do, I'll be a little bit closer. I'll be something like this. Um, but I think basically I wanna start here. I'll have Quinn say something. Then I'll move up, the car will be there. So I'll be looking at the car and I'm gonna come around this way. And then I'm gonna come in front of that light and I'm gonna end somewhere, something like that. Um, and there's a few things that I, that I want you to take note of why I'm doing it this way. I'm not moving behind the stand because anything, the 3D model is gonna be in the very front and anything that I want to be in front of the 3D model, I would have to roto. So I'd have to roto out these frames and I don't wanna do that because I'm lazy. So <laughs> I'm gonna do that. The other thing is, if you look in the back, all that stuff is great for tracking. All that stuff, it's just lots of detail, lots of sharp points, same back here. But on the ground, there's not a ton of great tracking points. And if you saw the, the movement, 
when I get to over here, there's not a lot here to track. It probably The software would probably do okay, but I could add tracking markers on the wall. I could put them on the floor. Um, the other thing I could do is I can literally just move stuff and put it where in the frame so that over here, there's, you know, maybe like this, for instance. Uh, it's a great example. So I can just put stuff here. Um, now, if you have an art department, you can't just do that. But, uh, but I'm just giving you an idea of like, you need to have stuff, uh, you need to have enough information to track everywhere that your camera is going to be. The other thing is you're going to want to shoot a dirty plate and a clean plate. This gives us a really good idea of what the light looks like, right? So in the gray ball is a great example of like how the, the color and the harshness or softness of the light, um, the reflection ball as well, you could sort of get an idea. Um, and then the color chart as well. So whatever LUTs are applied or if you're doing raw, whatever, you can use this to calibrate your, your setup. So you'll do the whole thing with the gray ball and color chart, and then you'll do it again without. So without will be the clean plate and with will be the dirty plate. Um, and so you can see, depending on where you're at, the lighting looks very different, right? How much of that purple or pink is hitting the, the side of it as opposed to from here, as opposed to when we're over here, et cetera. So this you can use for reference later on to see what the light looks like at all parts of your scene. Okay, so this is my dirty plate. So we're gonna start here. Quinn's gonna say something. I'm gonna move over to the car. And I'll probably come up like this. Come around and back up, see the full car. And I'll probably cue Quinn to say something at the end. So I'll probably have her say something. Okay, now it's time to shoot the HDRI. Make sure to follow the steps I showed you in the last video using the new HDRI app from Rico Theta. Now we have shot the HDRI. I'm going to move this out of the way and I'm gonna rehearse a few things with Quinn and then we'll take the shot. Before we end this video, I want to mention two plugins for the Rico Theta Z1. The HDRI plugin shoots, stitches, and merges HDRIs and saves them to EXRs all on the camera. This can save you countless hours and is my go-to for shooting HDRIs now. The only downside is that it can take about a minute for it to process. The other plugin is Burst IBL Shooter. It is meant to shoot images as fast as possible for you to manually process later. This is great for when there is little time to capture HDRIs on set and you need to get in and get out. Both of these apps are great too because they are very simple. You can give the Z1 to someone on set like a PA and have them capture HDRIs for every scene even if they do not know anything about visual effects. Okay, that wraps up this video. Click here to watch the other videos in this playlist. Next up, we're going to be talking about camera tracking and match moving. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. All right, take care.